So we'll start all this with uh, solar panels and um, what I know. Just remember this is all theory. Uh, things I've read, conclusions that I've come to. Actually, not even really conclusions. But uh, these are what my two arrays are putting out together. And that's what I'm selling and maintaining in the house. And uh, we'll go to the solar panels. So it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. So uh, it's a little late in the day to be making power. But still doing pretty good. But uh, I'll go into what I know about uh, the panels themselves. Now you got to remember that uh, they're all enclosed in glass. Glass is actually a great insulator. It was uh, one of the original insulators when they uh, first started running power lines. Uh, you'll see antique stores having those glass insulators. Uh, the aluminum is completely isolated from the frame itself. So, uh, you know, as long as that's ran to ground, it'll, they'll actually protect themselves, in theory. But uh, satellites are solar powered. You know, they get pounded all the time, and um, they're tough. They're a lot tougher than you think. And you also got to remember that these, uh, this array pretty much took a direct lightning strike last summer. I did put a video up about that, and uh, the array itself survived, even though lightning and uh, a solar flare or an EMP are two different things, but they're somewhat alike. Now before I go into some of this stuff, um, I guess it's best to explain the difference between an EMP and a uh, coronal mass ejection CME or solar storm. Um, a solar storm is not as dangerous for you know your individual electronics such as your cars, um, some of your uh, just regular electronics where a uh, EMP, although far more unlikely to happen, of course there's a lot of people that would love to do it. Um, is an actual high frequency event. It can actually wipe out most electronics that aren't uh, protected. And remember both of these events are definitely a uh, power grid killer or capable of taking down a power grid depending on how powerful they are. Um, and that's where the inconvenience comes in. I, uh, I didn't do all this stuff in the event of an EMP or solar storm. It just happens to work out that I have it and I paid attention when I was putting it together. Most of this is for backup power for uh, hurricanes and things like that. Um, this inverter here, now they make a couple different models of these. They make vented and they make non-vented. This one's actually meant to be outside. It's a non-vented version. In other words, it's a steel cage around the entire thing. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, that will help save that thing but you never know. Where on the other hand an inverter like this uh, that's air cooled throughout the inverter is open. Uh, it's got vents everywhere. Um, you know a uh, EMP or a solar storm. Mainly an EMP would uh, most likely take out this inverter because it does have some uh, solid state electronics in it. Now I did say that uh, a lightning strike is not the same thing as uh, uh, having a uh, electrical interference like a solar storm um, but it did take out both of these charge controllers that was the only thing that I lost in my solar uh, system and my battery monitor but um, I was actually here during the storm and I unplugged this uh, one thing about a uh, an event with the sun is you will have time if you do hear about it where I'd come and unplug this I'd unplug all kinds of stuff now I would recommend grounding all of your equipment. Um, most everything would come with what's called a chassis ground and I would run that to its own independent ground outside of the uh, your house itself. I mean you want to totally isolate it from the power grid and that's what I've done here. Now these are my lightning arresters. Those are the ground cables and they actually go up and over. And they all come together right here. And this is all insulated grounds. Now this is something I read that you want to run insulated grounds. Now one thing to remember is that a uh, EMP or solar storm, uh, you think about electricity in the air and all that, and it's looking for a ground. Uh, well in this case it's not true. Uh, although some of it will absorb into the ground, most of it's just going to dissipate on its own. Um, so grounding, from what my understanding, is a good idea, but it is not the answer. Uh, what an event like this would be is just the air around us, our atmosphere, just be totally saturated with electrons. And uh, that's why it would wreak so much havoc on the power grid. And like I said before in the last video, uh, 
batteries are absolutely fine. Uh, they can take some unimaginable abuse with, you know, shock loads and things like that. They're just uh, super robust. And then also to answer a question that I get a lot, batteries on concrete, it's a wives' tale. Complete and total wives' tale. In fact, batteries love being on concrete because they like to be cold or, you know, cool wear anyway. Just like a dog lays on the concrete. They love it. So now if something horrible like that were to happen, which uh, I don't think it's likely, but it's possible. I think you need to do your own research. Um, I don't want to, you know, scare people into thinking that you need to jump out and get ready for one of these events. Um, but, you know, you never know. But uh, if you were to lose something like your charge controllers, um, obviously it'd be a really bad event if you lost the power grid anyway. You wouldn't really need a charge controller. You could just use a simple on-off switch to charge your batteries and, and you yourself could be the charge controller. And if you had a spare inverter or one that survived, um, that's pretty much all you'd need. Um, I honestly believe that the solar panels will hold up fine. Maybe the blocking diodes wouldn't, but actually they're pretty tough too. And um, I know the batteries would. And I know uh, all of your wiring would hold up. So I could just take the charge controllers out and wire them together, wire the wires together like they're not even there, and just use these on off switches to charge the batteries. Um, you could be your own charge controller. So in the next video, I'll probably go into the Faraday cages and hardened cabinets, things like that. I kind of like this subject because it's, uh, it's very cheap, very easy to do, inexpensive cabinets, some grounding wires, things like that. And, yeah, you can test them. Radio like this, it'll actually sometimes take it out without even shutting both doors. But not this time. Let me turn this up. Out it goes. So, pretty cool. Now this one here is running at a lot higher of a frequency. It's a little bit harder to take it out. But it takes it right down. Now remember, this is not rock solid information. Uh, I'm no scientist. Um, I want you to do your own research. Uh, research the probability. Uh, research. Uh, how you can protect things. Um, this is just kind of uh, me putting together my own information, deciphering it, and uh, doing my best. I can't even say for sure that uh, this stuff will work, but um, just the best of my ability. So uh, leave comments, ask questions. Uh, I'll do my best. You guys have a good one. See you.